Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be part two of my April wrap up. So as uh, you'll know if you watched my first wrap up I actually had a really good reading month and I've had to split this into two videos and I'm going to talk about the final five books that I read in the month of April in this video. So at the point that I left you um, I was then about halfway through the month um, I'd had a really good reading month. I'd had a really fast reading month to start with. So I'd got to about the second, third week through the month. And I thought that my first book after the last book that I finished um, should be the book club pick for the month. If you don't already know, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I belong to the Just One More Page book club run by the lovely Jess McGlynn over at Jess McGlynn. Uh, she has a YouTube channel and she has an Instagram account and she has Instagram account for the book club. Um, if you want to uh, have a look and see what we've been reading in the past months, then go and check her out. I'll leave all the links down below. Um, but the April um, theme was suspense and we picked The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. And I actually really enjoyed this. Um, I really surprised myself. Sometimes with suspense, I can be a bit hit or miss. Um, it depends on how they grab me. But this one did really well and it grabbed me really quickly and I really wanted to know what was going on. It's about um, a psychotherapist called Theo and he wants to go and work with a patient called Alicia who was convicted of murdering her husband. But from the point that she actually committed the murder or supposedly committed the murder, she hasn't spoken since. And he wants to help find out why and bring her back to the world and start her talking again. And we go from there. So we start out following him as he works out uh, how to get um, into the facility, get employed by the facility where Alicia is being held and also then get onto her case and start working with her. Um, and then we start following his story and we get some of his um, backstory, we get some of his uh, side story, his personal story, and we start following Alicia's story, although not told from Alicia's perspective, um, of what happened in the run up to the murder and what happened and, and obviously subsequently who did murder him. So it's a little bit of a whodunit as well as the suspense. And I really, I can't say anything more than that. If I said anything more than that about the story, it would spoil it for you. You really have to go in and read it for yourself. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I would definitely pick up a book by Alex Michaelides again. Um, because I didn't see the twist coming. When when it actually happened, um, I sat, I was reading in bed at the time. And I just remember, vividly remember, sitting straight up in bed and going, oh my God. Um because I just hadn't expected that to happen. Um, I'd started having little suspicions about what was going on, but not that. Um, so anything that keeps me guessing, then I really do enjoy. And Alex Michael Eadie certainly managed to keep my attention for that. Um, I liked the build-up of the character of Theo and of Alicia and the little glimpses you got into maybe how maybe Hannah being portrayed isn't quite right, or maybe um, how they've gotten to the point where they're being portrayed in that manner and I thoroughly enjoyed it for that reason so highly recommend it and very very glad that I picked it up. From there I wasn't sure if I wanted a suspense novel or if I wanted to move back to romance or, or really what so I kind of toyed with my kindle for a few hours um, just having a look through books that I'd bought in previous Aprils and I came across Delicacy by David Foinkinis. This is a book that I've had for a long, long time. Um, and I think it was the cover that actually really drew me in initially. At the time that I bought it, I was reading a lot, a lot of romance. And this was a translated work. Um, and I think I wanted to dip my toe into something that may be a little bit different. It's, it was a good book. Um, but it wasn't quite what I was looking for. Uh, so it didn't, it didn't actually give me real, oh my God, I've really enjoyed it. But I didn't hate it like I did the three Marie Romance books that I did at the start of the month. 
So the premise is that we're following Natalie, whose husband has died. Um, it's, it is a romance, so it's about uh, losing love and finding it again. And it's the aftermath. So we go through um, up to Natalie losing her husband and grieving for him and then returning to the world of work um, and to the world in general. And one day she's just in a fit of no idea what, she kisses one of her colleagues. And it's the fallout from that. And it's how they discover those colleagues, her, Natalie and Marcus, the colleague that she kissed, how they discover each other. Because before that, they barely ever interacted um, as a couple, um, as, as two people that work together, let alone as um, potentially being in a couple. Uh, I had some issues with one of the other characters who I felt maybe was, I don't know whether this, I, I just the way they behave towards Natalie after Natalie's husband's passing. They weren't bad to her. They didn't ignore her. They just, they made it clear that romance was on the cards if she wanted it. And this was in the weeks after he passed and it was completely inappropriate and I didn't like it at all. And I didn't like that character at all. Um, and even right to the end of the book, um, I didn't like that character, but I liked the portrayal of Natalie and obviously losing, losing her husband, who she was so deeply, deeply in love with. Um, and you know, there, there was no question that theirs was a relationship that would last. Um, so then finding love again and finding love with someone who she wouldn't ordinarily look twice at, um. And I just thought it was really sweet. Um, it's not one that I would reread, but it's one that I'm glad I read it. I finally got round to it. I should have read it years ago. Um, and I'm glad I got to it. So after reading Delicacy, I then had one of those very rare moments where I am influenced by what's going on in the world of social media. Uh, I was then at the point where Shadow and Bone was literally about to release the TV series. Now, Shadow and Bone is not a book series I've read. Um, I haven't read anything by Lee Bardugo at all. I have got Shadow and Bone on audiobook. Um, I had hoped to listen to it at some point. Um, but yes, the TV show had come out and it's exploded in the same way that if you're a romance fan, um, in the same way that Bridgerton did right at the beginning of the year, uh, Shadow and Bone for the fantasy reader has done exactly the same thing and it's just exploded um, it's 2021's Game of Thrones basically um, different story but just the fantasy genre um, side of it and yes it was everywhere but also at the same time an author whose books I've been following over a number of years now uh, J.R. Ward she had a new release come out as well and if my feed wasn't about Shadow and Bone it was about J.R. Ward's latest release, Lover Unveiled. Now, I'm behind in J.R. Ward's vampire series, uh, The Black Dagger Brotherhood. That's what the new release was from. I kind of had put the series to one side because the last couple of books I've read, I just wasn't happy with. Um, I feel like J.R. Ward has lost away a little bit with some elements of the series um, and of the world. So I put them to one side and thought I'll come back to them another day. But I was feeling so influenced and at that point I didn't want to start watching a TV series that was adapted from a book I'd never read because I don't like watching adaptations without no when I know that they're an adaptation I'd rather read the book first. So I was feeling completely influenced and I picked up The Thief which is book 16 in the Black Dagger Brotherhood um, and that was the next book that I needed to read. This is a sale and solo story. They are um, two characters that are picked up from from kind of a couple of previous books. They've kind of had a bit of a background going on in the previous couple of books. A sale has become unwell, and Sola is his only hope of um, getting well again. And Sola comes to the Brotherhood's mansion. Now, Sola doesn't know about vampires. She knows there's something strange about Asael, uh, but she knows that Asael is a drug dealer and she associates that everything that's to do with Asael being a vampire, she associates with the world of drug dealers, drug kingpins. So she's not, um, she's not bothered by that side of the lifestyle. Um, 
but yes uh solo does find out that a sale is a vampire and then there is the toing and froing about that and can she live in this world and we go from there and i really enjoyed it there is some progression with the side story which is what brings on the brings the um, brotherhood into it uh, they are fighting an evil that threatens their entire way of life and uh, there is all the backstory in that we've also got the continuation of a storyline that started for a previous couple uh, Jane and Vicious um, they've had a bit of a rumbling in the previous couple of books um, there were problems with things that Vicious was doing which supposedly isn't supposed to be able to happen to bonded vampires so I know that there's a lot of people out there that weren't happy with that um, and were thinking of putting the series down but I'm glad I carried it carried it on it was one of the things that put me off reading the next book but I'm glad I did read it because now we've got the resolution to that um, so Jane and Vicious are sorted and we can move on and I really enjoyed it in the end I enjoyed A Sail and Solars I'm getting a bit fed up of the um, background storyline uh, with the evil um, I think it should have been wrapped up a long time ago I think it had the potential to be wrapped up a long time ago but I think I think J.R. Ward had more stories to write um, but didn't know how to bring them in without without um, the the uh, evil to be defeated backstory in there as well so from there that led me into a bit of a series binge now if you've been watching my videos you know that I'm trying to reduce my TBR and I'm also trying to allow myself to mood read a little bit within the confines of having an actual TBR for the month um, I'm allow trying to allow myself room to have some mood reading as well by the time I'd finished um, A Sail and Solar Story, finished The Thief, I was well and truly in the mood for The Black Dagger Brotherhood again. So I decided to carry on and read the next book in the series because I already owned it and it would knock another one off my TBR and I was in the mood for a vampire romance. And the next book was Prisoner of Night. Now, this isn't set around The Black Dagger Brotherhood. It is a Black Dagger Brotherhood world book. And... The couple in this, like I say, they don't have any links to the Black Dagger Brotherhood at all. So Amer is a female vampire and her brother has been held captive um, by another member of the, the vampire race. And she has to try and rescue him. And in doing so, she is paired up with a male vampire. She is given a mission by the guy who has her brother, by the vampire who has her brother, and is teamed up with another male vampire who it turns out is her bonded male um, and it's about how they have to go on this mission together um, and part of this mission actually takes Duran the male vampire she's teamed up with back to his upbringing and there's some danger in there and they have to face some demons together and it was done really, really well. It was only a short story. It wasn't a full length Black Dagger Brotherhood novel that like we're used to. But I actually really enjoyed it because there was none of the toing and froing and the, the, the huge world that is the back, Black Dagger, that is that with the Black Dagger Brotherhood. Um, because it was just set in this world. It was much smaller. It was much, much more contained. And there were only two main characters. Um, and there were only four side characters and absolutely loved it and I'm really glad that I picked it up and carried it on um, and it really really did remind me of what I absolutely loved about Ward's writing in the first place and why I really enjoyed um, the first 10 books in this series completely and from there again I was on a bit of a series binge and I had one more book on my TBR from past years from the Black Dagger Brotherhood and that is The Saviour. So The Saviour is bringing back a long-awaited character. It's a character who's been on the fringes and has been hinted at a few times and is one that fans of the series have wanted to know more about for a long long time and that is Murder. And Murder um, comes back to the Brotherhood because he's been left in an inheritance and he doesn't want it and 
he has to actually go and see the king to renounce the inheritance. But at the same time, um, 20 years previous, he was kicked out of the Brotherhood because he went a little bit... His mental health was very, very seriously affected. And he'd gone to rescue um, his female that he was involved with at the time. It wasn't his bonded female, um, but it was the female that he was heavily involved with. She had been taken captive by humans and was being experimented on. While they were in the facility, he also saw another um, vampire who was being held against her will and being experimented on. Now, this vampire has subsequently escaped and has written to murder, wanting her to go and res wanting him rather to go and rescue her son. And it's about what happens from there. Um, he meets uh, his bond, his actual bonded female during this rescue. Um, and again, it's about a human who finds out about the world of vampires and has to learn to accept it if she wants to be with the man that she loves. Again, really glad I enjoyed it. Uh, as with The Thief, really enjoyed the story um, that <clears throat> came through with this couple. Really believed in Murder and his female. We also had a second romance storyline, again revisiting a couple from a previous book. This time it was Hex and John Matthew. And Hex and John Matthew, I never felt that their story was really fully done with anyway. I felt that there was still some tension between the two of them that needed to be worked out. They, they're not a couple that are always happy. There's usually something going on with them. Um, but yes, there was some tension with them that had to be worked out this time that meant that they could fully come together as two people who loved each other. Um, obviously, over the course of the previous books, they have been working towards this. So it's not a surprise when they actually confess how much they really love each other and resolve all their differences. Um, but it is great to see them grow as a couple, especially Hex, because she has some issues um, and she's not great at uh, giving herself away um, in the first place. Anyway, so it was really, really pleasing to see them grow as a couple and as individuals. So those are all the books that I finished in the month of April. Um, I'll leave part one linked down below for you so you can go and check that out if you haven't already. But if you have got this far in the video, then please give me a thumbs up. If you aren't already, then please, please subscribe to the channel. I would really, really love it if you could. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.